everyone. Um, I'm Deb LeBeau, Chair of the Library Board of Trustees. Tonight is our Board of Trustees meeting. It's March 22nd. Um, the first item on the agenda is to review and act to approve the minutes of our last meeting, which was February 22nd. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And that passes. Just as an addendum to um, the miscellaneous business, the Community Preservation Committee spoke with us last time, and I am sure other people got the email that they're doing a presentation here at the library on the 29th um, as well. Yeah. And uh, that's at 6.30. Yeah. Yeah. I think they're yeah. seeking uh, they're, the yeah. input. Yeah. 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 So. They had mentioned that during their presentation last time. Okay. Next item is to review and act to approve the report of the director's activities of February 2022. Once again, she's been busy. And I had a question. What are blue marble librarians? Oh, uh, <laughs> that's a group of librarians in Massachusetts who uh, advocate for sustainability, uh, climate change, and resilience of communities and uh, stuff like that so they um, you know it's a it, this was a meeting for idea share and networking so Mike and I attended the meeting we've been thinking about it for a long time you know having uh, regular programs on uh, sustainability and stuff um, so we got some ideas from them they some libraries have book groups every quarter or something they read and discuss a book pertaining to climate change and sustainability. Uh, others have, uh, you know, craft activities for kids with recyclable products and biodegradable products and stuff like that. And we have been talking with uh, Missy Hollenbach, who is interested in that for a long time. We've been discussing, uh, you know, having some program at the library. And uh, on April 21st, she is uh, launching or <laughs> kickoff of a, a group that she is forming called Climate Crisis Challenge Club. And uh, the kickoff event is going to be a kids film uh, and a general film for adults. So we're planning that on April 21st. And uh, April 30th, actually, Selco is doing something regarding uh, related to Earth Day activities at the, in the Common, and we will also participate with, uh, with them. A bunch of organizations in town doing something. Sounds great. Yeah. We have the 50 plus job seekers and their working club. Um, how many participants typically do you have in that, and who are the employers who so this is um, this is a group that is run by um, a, a librarian at in Tewksbury, okay. and we have partnered with with that library and a few other libraries also. And there is a facilitator who leads every meeting, virtual meeting, and she invites um, some hiring firms or somebody to talk about LinkedIn and you know, give tips for job seekers. So there's different activities at every meeting. And I don't know the exact number of people from Shrewsbury who are attending because it's a wide, um, you know, offering for many libraries and communities. So what we do is divide up the attendance if there are 50 people attending and uh, 10 libraries that are uh, offering this together, we just divide the numbers uh, as far as attendance is concerned. But we don't know exactly how many people from Shrewsbury are attending. Thank you. Hmm. Okay. I, I wanted to point out a couple things from the children's programs. Uh, so I'd asked the children's uh, team and Sonia and her team to come up with some um, project or activity that would tie in with our Civic Hub, uh, the grant that we got. So she and her team,
came up with two programs for um, the February vacation. One was community art project, where uh, she had asked children to write, draw, paint, or construct a creation that represents what community means to them. And that was for the whole week, and then they, there was a raffle and all that. Uh, and the other was community helpers story time, uh, where the librarians read the book Sofia Valdez, Future Press by Andrea Beatty, uh, about helping and loving your community. And uh, they had a community themed activity. Oh, wow. So it was very, nice. very nice yeah. to tie it in with our um, Civic Hub grant. That's great. And I see that the story walk now is um, by Amanda Gorman. Yes, oh, February wow. was yeah. uh, Amanda Gorman. Oh, nice. Uh, March for Women's History Month is um, <coughs> Dinosaur Lady, about the first woman paleontologist. Oh, wow. So, yeah. Wow, great. Hey, any other comments? Just it was busy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You um, are busy. Would you like to leave we'll talk about the digital services that are under personnel. Yes. Yes. Okay. We don't think that we need to vote on that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, next. April, you had. Sorry. That's uh, okay. Do you had a question about that? Right. Approval of. It was the financial. I think that we. Oh, missed not last this time. one. Okay. So that, right. I don't know if that needs to be voted upon. Last time we got the year to date report. report. And we, I was right into the minutes and I was like, oh no, we never. <laughs> yes, we never I do. Yeah. So, um, so it made us realize we weren't sure. We I were wasn't sure. Supposed to do that or not. Yeah. Yeah. Well, when we get there, why don't we just vote? <laughs> <laughs> I know. I looked at previous. <laughs> yeah, it's reports, and some of them had been yeah. voted on yeah. and some had not yeah. Okay. Um, so next. Um, the agenda is, um, did, have, have we reviewed this? <laughs> yeah, How many programs that kind of went along with? Yeah. yeah, any questions about that? Mm -mm. Very busy. Yes. Okay. Every month. Every month, <laughs> all right. <laughs> all right. So under this, um, item on the agenda is also discussion of the situation on Fridays and early release days. So why don't we dive into that? Sure. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> How did I know this week? Um, so as, as you all know, we have been, you know, brainstorming ideas to um, engage, have the kids uh, be productive, <laughs> engage them. Uh, and the different measures that we took as um, the youth services team and the management team, we all got together and discussed it. And we've been discussing with the trustees, with all of you also. So the first thing we did was hire two teens to uh, help the young adult librarian supervise and monitor the behavior of the middle school children um, on Fridays and early release days. Uh, there have been communications from the school superintendent and the school principals so parents and guardians are aware um, you know, that they have to advise their children also about how, what is appropriate behavior uh, at, a li at the library. Uh, we have a board with what is appropriate behavior, you know, all the tips there right, at the side, right uh, near the entrance to the library. So we point that out and tell the kids you know, that they should behave well when they are here and not run about in the library, not rush into the elevators or go down to the children's room because uh, it, it's disruptive for other patrons in the library. So we did make the decision that middle schoolers should be in the hallway, the community commons, and the teen room because that is a designated area for middle school and high school students. The children's room is for younger children and their families, and other areas in the library are all designated for various 
uh, uses. The reading room is for people to read uh, newspapers and magazines. And the science fiction room is, again, a room where you can go and browse for science fiction books. There are only two seats there. And we don't want a number of people going there and congregating. Um, so then we did have a discussion uh, with the trustees, the personnel committee of the trustees. And uh, do you want to talk about this? Well, it's, it's really, I think we were all disturbed because behaviors were really getting quite out of line. And uh, not only were behaviors disruptive to other patrons in the library, but they were really pretty dangerous at times. Um, I'm referencing uh, fighting in the library, um, running in the parking lot here, throwing stones at each other, and in general, really just creating an atmosphere that I think people are very uncomfortable with. And um, I, I can only speak for myself, but felt that you know things were really getting out of control. Uh, and that's why I think in part, or a big part, why we decided to limit the access to the whole library. I don't think that we're saying that middle schoolers can't have access to the library at other times. Certainly there's a lot of middle schoolers that might want to find a little corner and read a book, and that's fine. But when two to three hundred students come at one time, it's just a recipe for disaster. And honestly, I don't think that any of them are going to be looking for a quiet space to read a book on those days. Um, so we problem solved different things, uh, including um, what we had already mentioned, but also perhaps even seeking adult volunteers to help remind kids of appropriate behavior in public spaces. Um, I know that Joe Sawyer sent something out to parents uh, earlier, I think in February, which generated some response but yet the behaviors still continue. Um, I guess it was a little bit better last Friday, but I, I, I just think that we need to stay on top of it as much mm -hmm. as possible. I did draft a letter. I think everyone has a copy of it, and it really is just a draft, um, but really just you know, to continue to pursue getting information out to parents and guardians as to what is going on here at the library. Um, you know, I, for one, as a parent, if my child said, I'm going to go to the library after school, I oh, that's a great thing to do. Well, I don't think parents understand that right. there are hundreds of kids coming to the library. Um, and I really don't think that they know at this point, uh, when I say they, I mean the students, um, really are unsure, many of them, of how to behave without some sort of supervision and structure. So I ask you just to look through the letter uh, either tonight or at some point, and maybe if you have suggestions or edits, please feel free. And uh, we were talking a little bit before the meeting opened, and you know, certainly generate more discussion as if you want to send out a letter to parents and guardians, and if so, how to actually do that, where it will actually get before the parents' eyes, guardians' eyes. Um, I don't know how many parents' guardians read the email communications. Maybe it needs to be sent through US mail, which I know is an expense. But um, anyway, I just wanted to generate some discussion around mm -hmm. this matter. I also did contact uh, Vanessa Hale, the Friends president, and asked if the Friends group might also be able to provide some adult chaperone type of people here. And one of the wonderful things that the staff did was to develop kind of a template as to how to respond to behaviors that are not acceptable. And yes. I thought that was very helpful. Right, for all the staff to be consistent with yeah. what we communicate yeah. to the kids and yeah. how to respond to them. And I just wanted to highlight our uh, child safety yes, policy, yes, yeah. which um, according to our child safety policy, it, we say that children up to grade four must be continually attended and supervised by a parent or parent's representative while in the library. And children in grades five through eight may be left unattended for a maximum of two hours. So uh, the early release days 
um, the children are here longer than that, and that is against our policy, and it is, I think, not even safe for them to be here for such a long time mm -hmm. or be out in the parking lot. So um, that's, I think, parents or guardians should pick them up uh, two hours after they are in the library. So the parents need to be made aware of this yes. policy. Yes. I'm wondering, yes. too, um, if we, we need to revise that child safe policy that unaccompanied middle schools and restrict it to this part of the library, would, would that be a logical thing to put into the, our, our child safety protocol? You know, in those two hour periods right. that you're without their parents. Right. Uh, I think it might, we have a teen, uh, teen policy. I don't have that in front of me now. Um, that might say that the teen room, the young adult space is meant for young adults. You know how we say yeah, others cannot go into mm -hmm. the young adult space? Would that include middle schools? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but not quite teens, I mean. <laughs> that, that, that's a point, yeah. We should, I'll look I at that policy. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. The five and six, grade five and six aren't. No. But then they don't really have a place, right? I guess I'm saying that we're finding this issue right yeah. now. <laughs> right. And how do we actually put the policy together? Yeah. Yeah. And how do you how do you maintain two hours? You know, if they come in at three o'clock, then at five o'clock, teens should leave. Right. Well, On Fridays we close at five, so that right. is right. fine. Yeah, right. It's the early release days early release. when they are here for a longer mm. time. Oh, that's true. Close yes. Friday on at five. Yes. I forgot. I, um, I always like the idea of accountability. <laughs> I would really advocate some kind of a sign-in system where you know, people sign in when they come. But I don't know that the students have IDs. They, they don't. don't. In middle they school, don't. they don't. Yeah. And, and so there'd be no way to verify can. that you're actually who you say you are. But if, if we can't, if we couldn't contact Trace for COVID and have people uh -huh. acknowledge that they were here, how uh, they do this yeah, for yeah. kids because they're younger? We should right. Yeah. And they're minors. I don't know, it's a privacy there's no kind way of issue too, yeah. Yeah, there's a privacy issue and Priya was saying that like even if you ask someone to leave, friends are letting them in the side door or you know, um there's just all kinds of, there's all kinds there's of. There's a lot of shenanigans. Like the librarians <laughs> will, will ask the child their name and they'll give a false name. Yeah. That's yeah. Christ. And I would never have thought of doing something like that. <laughs> <laughs> I can't think that fast. Are you allowed to lock this door at the end or does, does it that is locked. It is <laughs> locked? It is locked. Oh, okay. But if, if there somebody are 10 goes kids out. here, they can open the door oh, they for open their it. friends yeah. to come. Okay. In. Yeah. You can't lock it to prevent people from leaving. Right, right, right. 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 Yeah. Right. 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 Yeah. No, I thought they were coming in that way. They come back that way. They, they come back, yeah. come back <laughs> that way. Yeah. Other friends. Um, yeah. yeah. Do we have any idea how many middle school people, like if we were going to mail, do a mailing? Because I do think that a piece of mail is going to go directly to parents. Would be more effective. I, yeah. I think so, yeah. but um, how many, you know, plenty of families will have students at both schools, so it's not a total of... <coughs> yeah, I, I don't know the count. Um, it's about 2,000 students in the middle schools, but I, how, ma how many of them are duplicate. like duplicate kids? Mm -hmm. I don't well, know. Two and two. When well, it's a thousand. About five hundred per oh, class. It's a thousand. It's a, so it's about two thousand. Then total. yeah, total. Two thousand total students, but some will have. When they send things home, do they have labels? They don't. Um, send, they don't send things home. They don't send. They don't really. Yeah, that's true. They don't really send a lot home. Where the students have to sign it. Is there? I know that you sign it and send it back. Send the envelope back to the student. Is I know in the high school the third quarter is ending soon. Is the middle school, it would be a chance. Could we put in something in the report card? Oh, oh that's a good, yeah. That seems like a, a that's a lot of money to spend. To yeah, spend yeah. To, to Postage would be a ton of money. But if it went in the report card, yeah, it would be a thousand dollars to send all of that. Can you not send anything else with the report card? We might be able to. I know you can't have any like political communication or, you yeah, know, like we yeah. can never advocate for like, you know, vote yes for the library or that kind of thing, but I, I don't 
Has there ever been, I can't recall, my kids are much older than yours, has there ever been an uh, insert in a report Not card? Not that before? I have seen. I just remember, which is sort of part of the report card, kind of the physical fitness benchmarks. Oh, yeah, that stuff, yeah. Fitness yeah. Fitness fitness. yeah. 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 Well, we could start those, with an electronic communication, right? That the previous email. Yeah. Thought. Yeah. We could start that way, and that's free. <laughs> Just don't know if it's going to be effective. But I mean, it did. The first one did generate some exactly. discussion. So maybe we just have to keep hammering it and. And something probably needs to go out a couple of days before early release. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. To remind people that yeah, there's an early release date I think coming in up in April. April. Yeah, next April next August. week. Yeah. April. So that's coming right around the corner. Well, certainly the high school administrators would be able to tell us if we could put this in, the, in with the yeah. core parts, right? Yeah. Right. But it would come down to teachers, individual teachers, stuffing them probably. You know, we could fold them all. Well, I guess the first the first step would be to ask, you know, yeah. ask the two principals of the, the two schools if that's something that they would be receptive to. Is there any way we can request for an acknowledgement for having from the parents? We talked about that too. Um, don't quite know how to collect that, um, and also mm. whether it's an accurate signature <laughs> by the parent. Um, there's some good forgers out there. <laughs> 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 if they have to sign the report card envelope, you assume that they will. Yeah. I had a teacher when I was in New York, a math teacher, who he would give a test. The first test he gave, he made extremely easy. <laughs> so every all the kids got great oh, grades. Oh, that's how we got And he sent them home to be signed. Right. So he had in his draw the signature of every parent he had in math class. <laughs> that is crafty. <laughs> and I said, to him, I said to him one day, why do you make it so easy? And then he told me the method in his madness. And I thought, that was smart. And the kids never caught on. So wow. That's um, a good one. They're probably smart enough now to catch on. That was 20-something years ago. <laughs> the only thing would be if kids removed the letter from the office. Which they could. Because it, when they open the report cards on the bus and all of that. Yeah. I certainly don't trust the backpack as a means of communication. No. <laughs> you mean the black hole? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and this certainly could be incorporated into the next library newsletter. Yes. Well, that's not until summer, though, that's, right? Yeah, that so, would be the I mean, summer. <laughs> so in we the could fall, do it in the fall. It could go the fall sure. edition for sure. And I think the fact that it's it comes from the board of trustees mm -hmm. um, yes, is appropriate, you know. So um, so let's make sure that we do that the for the fall. If, if we ask the two principals if they would send um, this home electronically, um, maybe they could say something like, "We've been requested to send this to you from yes. the board of trustees in the library," right. and maybe that would get people to sort of read it so yeah. they could put that in the you know in your message it could be message from the Shrewsbury Board of Trust uh, Library Trustees and then maybe parents would look at it yeah. and that would wouldn't cost us anything it just ma matter of sending it to the two principals and asking them to send it out right yeah all right well would the board feel how how, how would you feel if somebody from from the board me I will do this um, contacts each principal via email and just send a copy of this yes. and ask mm -hmm. for their input in terms of how, how could it could be delivered. This? Yeah, that's a good um, idea. And uh, to your point, Joan, uh, reminding them that an early release day is coming up soon and yes. to be try to you know get it out before then. Mm -hmm. Does that yes. sound good? Yes. And, and unfortunately, I think some of the parents use the library in place of yeah. someone watching their children yeah. in the afternoon. Yeah. So that's yeah. part of what's... Yeah. Yeah, and know, you know, we created. don't want kids not to come. We right. just want them to come and respect the space and other people here. And we're talking about two, three hundred out of two thousand. Yeah, right, exactly. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. we have to... 
yeah. that in mind as well. But they, they can don't all come. No, <laughs> no. But also, but also, I think maybe to say in the letter that however many students descend on the library at once, is, is it 200 or 300? Could be, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's good. like pretty, that, that's overwhelming for, <sighs> yes. this is big, that but it's. in and of itself is important for parents to know because you might think twice about letting your child right. go if you right. know that there are 300 right. kids right. Especially right. fifth graders. You know, I think fifth and sixth grade, yeah. that's. They're still young. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And, and I guess I think they all know the correct behavior. I think it's one of these group effects. Yeah. Oh, sure. Yeah. 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 You say take a bunch yeah. of Cub Scouts and you find they're working IQ by dividing the average by the number of Scouts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> yeah. Oh, all right. So well, in the I, meantime. I do, I'll just comment, though. I, yeah. I, I do think it was very helpful to really direct the kids into this area. Mm -hmm. And there was there were enough adults standing yes. there saying, food and drink goes this way, you're restricted to this area of the library. I, I, you know, we, we didn't get too many resistors. Yeah. But I mean, there are kids that come and they really are trying to get a book. Yes. <laughs> you know, so, right, right. I, I, yeah. right. So I, I, I just think to, to maintain that directive, and, and our, our um, Annie Lee King, our, our team librarian, was very effective, I think, when she said, we have a new policy for middle schoolers on Fridays, yes. and this is it, and so you can go in here and you can, you know. So I, I think it's just yeah. maintaining that procedure at this mm -hmm. point might be very effective. Yes. How that plays out on early release days <laughs> Is another matter because they're here much earlier than three o'clock. Right. Mm -hmm. So right. Um, and then they're staying longer than our two-hour max. Right. 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 So if parents are aware that children in grades five through eight can be in the library only for two hours, mm -hmm. I'm sure they would uh, ensure that their kids are here only for two hours. Yeah. They pick them up. Do you find it's getting worse with the warm weather, or is it the same throughout the school year? Um, this school year has been, you know, we've had different guidelines because of COVID, right? Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Oh, so that, so it's been up and down. Okay. Of that. Yeah. And in the warm weather, do they just congregate outside on the lawn out here? They they wanted to come in, but then when when they found that it was too <laughs> that there were too many kids here, <laughs> they themselves did go out last Friday because it was warm and nice. They do hang out in the common or in the parking lot, but the parking lot is not very safe for, no. yeah. for children to be. But they, do have, they can play. go across to the common. Yes. Mm -hmm. There's also some <coughs> disregard for um, the walk lights and for traffic. Oh, yeah. Um, so that's a very big concern because, you know, they're just, some of them are just going across the river or they feel like it. Yeah. So well, that was what was in the Shrewsbury website that. You know that those that were in down by Dunkin' Donuts and all of that was that was a safety issue right. with some of them and what they were doing. You know, riding bicycles around cars and yeah. and police officers have had to come. Yes, yeah, yeah. they yeah. have started coming regularly now to do a walk through in the library, and I'm sure they go to the common and other places oh, sure. there too. So. Okay, so we'll keep at it. And so um, we'll, we'll get any <coughs> comments about Yes, this. if you could. We'll just email you. Yes, could yeah. you please? Yeah. Um, sure. Today is Tuesday. I'd like to try to you know, have contact with the principals this week. So yes. in the next day or two, okay. that would be most helpful. Yeah. Um, again, I want to try to get this out before the next release date, which you said is May April 5th. 5th, which is oh, yeah. very soon. Yeah. So. And um, I just noticed the Memory Cafe is starting up on every Yes, Friday exactly. In here. Oh, exactly. And what time does that run? Yeah. Two o'clock in the oh, afternoon. Oh, how, 
<laughs> How can that go it, inside? Uh, it, it actually used to work pretty well, mm-hmm. you know. The kids were respectful of the people yeah. coming Maybe in that here. Help their behavior. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe it worked, right? Yeah. yeah. And we used to have, you know, we used to have the divider here, and there were teens playing uh, yeah, video play games, games there, yeah. and uh, I remember yeah. memory cafe yeah. would meet here. So there was peaceful okay. coexistence. So let's let's be optimistic and yes. hope that that will. Yes. Yes. Well, I bet a lot of the kids who come want to sit at a table and talk to their friends and not have a lot of craziness going yeah. on. Yeah. But there are just enough that can make it yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. difficult. Okay. Well, thank you all. Thank you for dropping the Oh, yes. All right. So moving on to financial and legislative, we need to review and act upon the year-to-date report. We know if you have any questions. Again, we are on target. Yep, look good. The spending. Uh, right on track. Yes. Mm-hmm. So Isn't that nice? <laughs> it's very comforting. move to approve the. Yes. Yes. So was that a motion? You have a second? No, oh, second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, we approve that. And we need to also review and act to pr- approve the fiscal year 2023 service calendar. Yes. Which starts actually July 1st, 2022. Right, right exactly. Yeah, I just wanted to point out that uh, Christmas uh, is going to be on Sunday, December 25th. So I checked with the town. They said if, if a holiday falls on Sunday, the Monday mm-hmm. after is, uh, is the holiday. Um, but I wanted to see if uh, the board would consider Saturday, Christmas Eve, and uh, approve of it as a holiday now, or do we wait till you know, December. Usually the Board of Selectmen would uh, would approve uh, Christmas Eve, but because it's a Saturday and other town departments are not working right. on Saturday, uh-huh. I don't know if you want to weigh in on that. Well, I think if we're going to, my opinion is if we're going to do it, we should do it now rather right. than yeah, later. Um, and on Saturdays, we're open until 5 o'clock, 9 to 5. Nine to five. Day, yeah. yeah. I think if we do it now, I would close Saturday and Sunday both. Yeah. So and, Monday. Yeah. and Monday. Yeah. 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 And Monday. Yeah. 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 I move that we close for Friday, Saturday. Uh, Saturday, Saturday, Sunday, Sunday, and Monday. Monday. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. And this year we get to celebrate. Juneteenth. Yes. yes. Oh, actually, is it this year? Will we? Twenty twenty three. Not until twenty twenty. No, this year we, we will be. Too. Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. And I think we have to vote on this as an entirety yes. as well. So, yes. any other corrections to the calendar or any questions about it? Well, I move to accept the amended calendar. Right. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. So we're good for another year. (laughs) Thank you. All right. Anything under facility equipment and grounds? No. How about gifts and grants? Oh, uh, we received uh, an induction cooktop, a kit with induction cooktops from Selco. Um, Selco partnering with um, Center for Eco Technology, CET, and they donated uh, three kits, uh, which we have added to our library of things. So oh, it's got wow. an induction cooktop and some pans that you can use with it. It's oh, magnetic wow. and um, you know eco friendly. Oh, what fun! Yes, it's something you plug in. Yes, so. yes, electric ones. Is that one that are those here now? They are, yes. They're part it's of our library of things. Yeah. What's that? It's the induction cooktop, the one where it takes like a few seconds to boil a pan of water. I guess I, sh- I haven't yeah. bothered it and checked <laughs> it out. I've never seen it's a warranty. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> 
Remind us, how um, long can you check out an item from the Library of Things? One week. One week. Yes. Yes. Okay. So that we, they, they've donated three kits, okay. and we're very grateful to them Wonderful. for that. So that's part of our Library of Things. Uh, I also wanted to acknowledge um, the Turkey Trot Committee. Um, they, have, they are going to donate $2,000 oh, for nice. our Memory Cafe program. Oh, that's nice. great. Yeah. Thank you, Turkey yeah. Trot, trot yes. Committee. It's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> That's wonderful. Yeah. Yes. I guess they're trying to keep their funds local, and this is yes, a very that's, that's what they clear say. Yeah, very that. nice of yeah. them to do very that. Very good. Yeah. Right. And you didn't get the Greater Worcester, right? We did not. So yeah. that's great. Yeah. yeah. We were just going to use the yeah. state aid funds. Wonderful. Mm. Okay. Anything under personnel? Uh, personnel, <laughs> I mentioned that we've yeah. hired two teens. Yeah. Uh, it's, their names are uh, Pranav Kaulagi, and uh, I'll give you the spelling okay. later. And um, uh, Shamika Kanetkar, two, uh, one boy and one girl. Oh, good. Um, they're going to be, they, they've already started uh, working. And they're here just on Friday. They, they, they are here on Fridays and early release days. Oh, on group, okay. Yes. That's yes. great. Yes. Um, yes, regarding the digital services librarian and the technology specialist librarian, we had had to post the positions again. And we've received a few applications. We've started the interview process this week. Uh, going on we've interviewed a we interviewed someone yesterday a person today and we'll be interviewing someone tomorrow so um, Maria, do, you, do you think that um, that there's that the salaries that are being offered for those positions are not enough I mean is it is it causing us to get fewer applicants or fewer um, uh, qualified. qualified applicants. Uh, that is probably one factor. Um, but I mean, looking at the pattern, you know, the applic applications that we've received and the first round of interviews that we did, and we extended an offer to a, a qualified person, and um, they, you know, tried to negotiate, and we could only reach uh, a certain point where. You know, we could offer a little, we couldn't meet them where they, uh, what the, to what they expected. Uh, and I have been looking at other libraries with similar positions, with anything to do with electronic resources, technology, etc. And it does seem like um, they are other libraries of similar population, uh, in towns with similar population are offering a higher salary. Mm -hmm. So that might be something we have to uh, look at and reconsider. And there's a lot of competition for those kinds of qualifications. Th there is, so, yes. So, uh, you know, so what would we do? What steps would we take at this point to be able to offer more? I, I would have to talk to the town manager okay. and um, you know, reconsider that, read the descriptions again, and see how we can uh, Im increase the range, mm -hmm. the salary range. Because it's also retention. Yes, absolutely. You, know, you get someone mm -hmm. yeah. in, and they here for a while, and then they get a better offer somewhere right. where they're paying more. Right. So, you know, I, I think it's worth exploring. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah. Every year at town meeting, we look at personnel costs for all the departments, and every year there's some kind of an evaluation. I forget what they call it. You want to do the middle like of a yeah, higher plate or steps, something like different that. Different steps. Did mean steps. something or other. Do we have to, can we ask them to evaluate? It might be too late for this year, but I'm thinking right. next year. We don't, we no longer have the steps oh, no. uh, for employees. It's uh, performance-based uh, pay raises starting this year. So we no longer are gone. That's steps are gone. Mm -hmm. So it's do they do a comparison with other communities? So no? they don't do it every year. They did it in 2017, 18 when they did the study, um, 
and uh, they did offer, you know, made sh they made sure at that time that it was equitable pay for similar um, positions within the town and that it was comparable and competitive with other, uh, other institutions. But I think we are, you know, um, when the consultant at that time spoke to librarians and other town employees, they grouped a certain number of librarian positions along with other positions in the town, with, uh, with other departments. And it's not always comparable, the tasks that, mm -hmm. uh, you know, that we expect our staff to do. I don't know about the others, but it's not really comparable and uh, it's not easy to make that uh, decision that all of these people are going to be grouped together. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure. Uh, I would definitely have to have a conversation with the town manager yeah. mm -hmm. and uh, see what we can do. Especially if you have, you know, data that shows people have left because of salaries right. and that people haven't accepted because of salaries. I yes. think that in itself yeah. shows that right. you really need to look at it. Right. right. One of these positions is a professional librarian position with uh, skills in technology. So the person has to have a master's in library science with a concentration on or interest in um, technology. So there we are asking for a master's degree and uh, knowledge yeah. and skills with technology. The other is a paraprofessional position um, which we call a technology specialist. So a person with a bachelor's degree and interest in technology or experience with uh, technology in libraries can be hired for that position. But because they don't have a library degree, they might be looking at jobs in other sectors, sure, right. mm -hmm. you know, so yeah. it's, uh, yeah, so it's do, difficult. Do you do exit surveys with people when they leave? Or, and we they do. indicate that the salary was a major factor? Um, actually, the human resources uh, person had done the exit interviews when, uh, the previous um, employees had left. And I'm not sure if that alone was a factor, you know, with those two instances. I think one of them said that they were going to uh, another library, clo uh, the yeah. commute was shorter. I think they did mention the salary too, but I'm not privy to the, mm -hmm. that uh -huh. information. Well, certainly it's time consuming for you and your oh, staff absolutely. to engage in mm -hmm. the search and interview Heading. process. Yes. So for a lot of reasons, I think. Yeah. I think this next round will be telling in terms of, of that. Right, yeah. yeah. And we definitely have to be competitive to attract the best uh, talent. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, is is there any kind of bibliotech kind of thing you can fill in? Oh, uh, that's something I wanted to mention. We have um, hired temporarily from within. Uh, there's a person named Tuyen Truong, who's uh, a page on Sundays. She has a, a master's degree in computer science, huh? and she's going to grad school to get her master's oh. degree in library science. Oh. <laughs> she had not been working because her children were growing up, and she was doing other things. Uh, she has taught in Montessori and other th places. But, um, you know, I asked her if she'd be willing to work a few hours. So she is working about 10 hours a week now, helping Mike with uh, some oh, of the good. projects yeah. that oh, good. Uh, good. require it, yeah. Mm. So good. we do have a 10th person. Yeah. That's, good. That's great. I'm looking fine. Yes. Okay. The only other thing under personnel is that we met last week as a subcommittee and just reviewed the mm -hmm. goals, which really meshed well with the action plan. So thank you. That's great. Okay. All right. Anything else under personnel? Nothing else. So moving on to the Shrewsbury Public Library Foundation, um, we have recommendations for new members. I, I had shared those yeah. letters of interest mm -hmm. with yeah. all of yeah. you. Mm -hmm. So the foundation um, is uh, putting forth both of these names for approval by this board. 
Um, one is to replace um, um, Dale McGee, who has left the foundation board, so we needed a replacement. But we also um, felt that we really wanted to add an additional board member. So these two candidates fit that bill quite well. So, Good. Uh, so the foundation is asking for this board's approval of um, accepting these two new board members for the foundation. Right. Can we say their names or? Um, that perhaps we need to tell them first. Oh, I them. guess that would be a good <laughs> idea. <laughs> so, like, you know who they are. <laughs> um, All right. and then pending your approval, then we'll contact them. Okay. Directly. Okay. And do we need to vote on that? Yes. Oh. We, we actually are in charge of the appointment. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's correct. Yeah. So I, I, I guess I'll move to support the two candidates that the Foundation Board has brought forward. <laughs> okay. I second that. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 So unanimously, you have two new members. Excellent. That's great. Good. Excellent. So Thank I you. will contact them? Yeah, if if, like? yes, okay. that would be great. Okay. Uh, and then we'll have Mike Pagano also reach out to them. Okay, perfect. I'll um, I'll do that tomorrow. Excellent. All right. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Uh, next item on the agenda is the friends of the library. Uh, friends at the stop and shop uh, give back. What was that for the bag thing? Yeah. We uh, we received a check. For ninety-two dollars. Oh wow! So that, yeah, That's that a lot of bags. <laughs> yeah, so, yes. I think this was our third time. Yeah, we're trying so, it. Yes. Um, so yeah, I, I, I was pleased. <laughs> Great. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? I, I didn't make it to the last friends meeting, so I don't know what else was talked about. The book sale. The book sale. Oh, okay. In October. Uh -huh. If people want to donate to the book oh. sale, like, oh, yes, share? you can start donating. We have started accepting donations of books. So um, people should bring books. them to the desk? Yes. The and they're reviewed at the desk, correct? They will be reviewed at the desk. Um, okay. We are asking people to limit it to two bags or two boxes, two cartons of um, books in good condition and we don't accept encyclopedias or science books or computer books Textbooks. because they get out of date yeah or test prep books yes. or that sort of thing right okay. yeah okay. popular books fiction nonfiction, children's books cookbooks yeah. sure happy to accept those i'm a ton of them i'm not even looking at <laughs> <laughs> time to go well now you have an induction cooking service <laughs> <laughs> hold on to them yeah. <laughs> Okay, um, anything new, Priya, under policies? Uh, policies, I just wanted to uh, bring up two of the policies that we have, and I didn't, did not send this to all of you in advance, I apologize. Uh, it's just minor changes that uh, we are asking for. One is the Wi-Fi hotspot lending policy. And uh, we say that hotspots are limited to one use per household per month. Um, so we've noticed that people from the same family borrow the hotspot, return it on you know end of February, and again borrow it March 1st, saying that it uh, is the next month. Oh so we dear. just want a sentence added to that which says the third, uh, hotspots are limited to one use per household per 30 days. The 30 days are counted from the date the previous hotspot is returned. That so there has to be a 30-day so gap. 30-day gap, yes. Yeah. Does that make sense? It does. So they, they check out for a month? You check out for three weeks. You return it, and then we count 30 days before you can borrow you can it check again. check out for another month. Another three weeks. Have there and been people on a waiting also? list for them? No. No? Okay. There have, hasn't been a waiting list. We have 11 hotspots. Uh, Three of them had the process of being repaired, uh, but you know, there's not that much demand as one would think there, sh there should be. Yeah. <laughs> but 
think it's to just be fair and equitable to everyone. Sure. We want to yeah. uh, make sure the same family is not borrowing. Getting all it all the time. the time. Yes. People probably don't know it's available. That's why it's a yeah. <laughs> it might be an interesting feature for the newsletter to like have a, just like a little burst, like a little spotlight every month of like about the different the thing. thing says this. Did you know we have yeah, that's like a I non think book related thing? Sure. Yeah. Because but, yeah. especially the new the new uh, store. Yes. Right. Yeah. Right. Though if you've looked at the new website, the yeah. library of yeah. things is really yeah. highlighted yeah. very well. Yeah. I mean you can find things now on the website. Yeah. <laughs> You really can. Great job. So that is the that's the change in the hotspot lending policy, and then we have the library program policy, which we had revised in April 2020. But there's one cent. I mean, we are looking at everything again now because we migrated stuff to the new website and mm. the different pairs of eyes looking at rereading, uh, reading everything properly. So, uh, so we say the library philosophy of open access to information and ideas extends to library programming and the library does not knowingly discriminate through its programming which is fine and then we say all library press releases and major promotions will bear a statement of this principle and we haven't been including that in all our promotions or flyers you know saying that we don't discriminate with our programming. I don't know how it was included <laughs> before, but. Uh, Can't that just be a general statement for all programs rather than for each program offered? <laughs> right, I mean, yeah. so this makes it seem like every promotion will have that yeah. statement. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we don't do that. So we are thinking if we might take that line off completely. Mm -hmm sort of saying all library press releases and major promotions will bear a statement of this principle. I mean, it's there in the policy that yeah. we don't discriminate yeah. uh, and that yeah. there's access That's to yeah. information Sufficient. and ideas, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. I think so, so if we can just remove that mm -hmm. statement from the policy. Okay. So do you need a vote on those two yes, changes? Yes, please. Yeah. Wi-Fi hotspot and the library program. Okay. So... I guess I move that policy changes as pre-stated uh, regarding the hotspot and uh, lo the eliminating the sentence about discrimination for each press release regarding programs. Yeah, I second. All, right, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Next is, um, I guess, advice wants to set up a table yes. at the library. Wow. Yeah, they were thinking sometime in March or April. Um, I wasn't sure if I needed to get the approval for that, but I, I so. thought I would include that. But they've that. done that in the past. They have, yes. Yeah. Yes, they just want to have it for a sure. couple of days. Yep. And would it be right in the lobby area? It would be, uh, yeah, it would be somewhere there. Tell them not to use a Friday. That's true. Yeah, it's for domestic violence awareness. Uh, so people are in general in, in yeah. agreement with that. Oh, sure. And next, is, under miscellaneous, is uh, to discuss Hoopla's collection development policy. Okay, so, so uh, you, you've prob you probably read um, the article in the Telegram and Gazette, um, and was that a couple of weeks ago, um, where the director of the Worcester Public Library was interviewed uh, because he had said that he had given an ultimatum to Hoopla, which is a streaming oh, that's right. I streaming that. service yeah. and video streaming service. It has e-books, audio books, right. and uh, it had questionable content mm -hmm. that librarians had um, seen and brought to their attention, brought to Hoopla's attention. Um, so there were, you know, uh, there was health misinformation, fascist propaganda, and anti-LGBTQIA plus materials um, that were found in the Hoopla, among the Hoopla books. Now Hoopla, of course, has thousands of uh, books available. And the, when 
the director of Worcester, the Worcester Public Library reached out to them. They said that they would, re they apologized and they said they would remove this content, but they also said that they didn't believe in censorship. And uh, of course, librarians don't believe in censorship either, but we don't want hate propaganda and uh, materials that are factually incorrect to be available to our patrons. So when we do our collection development, when librarians purchase books, videos, anything, we read reviews written by experts. Uh, we see that the information is vetted carefully before it is included. And uh, it was, I mean, a number of librarians got together and said that this was not correct. They should know from where they're getting the information. Mm -hmm and Hoopla should be able to talk to the publishers who add this kind of content. Um, so Hoopla has said that they would review their policies again, and uh, librarians in Massachusetts and other states who are going to the PLA, the Public Library Association Conference, uh, are going to be meeting up again with uh, the Hoopla uh, salesperson and they will be talking again. So they have said, hopefully, they will have something uh, more concrete you know, to tell us than just saying, we'll take down the materials after mm -hmm. librarians have found it. Mm -hmm. But they have to be proactive and make sure that the content is not uh, factually incorrect and uh, you know, hate kind of materials. So uh, that's, that's where it stands right now. Um, We'll see what Midwest Tape is the company that um, yeah, offers Hoopla. So uh, we'll have to see how they respond uh -huh. now. Sure. Do, do they have other customers than libraries? Um, that's a good question. I think their main market is libraries. They, I don't know. Mm -hmm. No, but their curation is digital. Yes. So I would think they have colleges through and universities. Mm -hmm. But yeah. they'd be possibly through the library. Yeah. yeah. So I was thinking maybe organizations, any kinds of organizations might give us a description. Yeah. Any complaints from any patrons? Pardon? Any complaints from any patrons as they look through the whole block? No. Okay. We haven't received any. Right. Okay. Yeah, it's librarians who have found it. Yeah. And there's a group of librarians who belong to the Library Freedom Project. That's a loose group of uh, librarians who, you know, uh, advocate for libraries, for intellectual freedom, for privacy of patrons, and all this kind of stuff. So they have also um, noted this content and have also reached out. So I think with all all libra libraries getting together and. Um, talking to their reps, they should. Uh, mm. Could you know. keep us posted on that in terms Absolutely. of what the response from Hoopla? Is sure, yeah. sure, yeah. Okay. All right, I think that pretty much ends what's on our agenda. Is there anything else to talk about tonight? Um, do we want to talk about the board meeting date for December? It's a oh, down here is a TBA. Yeah, we usually decide that after we know uh, from the town manager about the fun, budget. Uh, budget, the meeting budget meeting that we have with uh, with him. So, so, have so we. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So what? Yeah, usually have to pull it in. Yeah, right. so I get give you all the budget proposal, and then uh, the board approves that. Uh, I think we try to date, I mean, determine that after we know what the date is from right. the town manager. And, and probably it bears repeating about the, the um, budget meeting. Oh, the finance committee oh, meeting yeah, is, is on that? Thursday. 8.35. At 8.35 at night. Uh, this Thursday? Yeah. Yes. At the town hall. Yeah. At the town hall. Oh, bedtime. <laughs> me. Yeah. In person meeting. I forgot I didn't put that in my calendar. Oh, it's selectman's room. Yeah. <laughs> so um, traditionally, as many of us as possible yep. do attend that. Yes. Yeah, 
Last year it was on Zoom. Yeah, I'm usually in my jammies. <laughs> Last year it was on Zoom, so we could be in our jammies. <laughs> I know, that's the tough part. We'll now. only look at your top half. Yes. <laughs> yes. I didn't put that in my calendar. I'm glad you mentioned it. Yes. It is a person. Yeah. 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 Do you, do you think we should come earlier, that they, they might get to us earlier? At least by 8, I would think. Yeah. 8 o'clock, right. we should be there. Oh, okay. I think right. so. Okay, and our next meeting is uh, April 26th. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I guess with that, um, does anybody have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. I second it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Kristen.